such a beautiful example because I literally set my limit order on the daily volume price target of 163949. Right? I put a big old sum there, 3x leverage, and I got filled. I mean, that's as close as you can get to hitting a top on this. <laughs> you know, I pretty much got the short on the top, and then I did, I got out a little bit early, but I was happy to take profits. I have to take profits on that. So, should we just, should we, should we just break this one down? Should I just break this, this example down? Because this is one that actually works out. So we'll just break this one down. Um, we'll re just redo this one. Because it's one that it's one that actually works in real life. So if I get rid of all my drawings. We'll start on the daily time frame, okay? Because the thing is with volume and price targets, the higher the time frame, you know, you can go to the extremes where the time frame then be kind of becomes irrelevant because of the you know, like a daily or a weekly time frame can throw a monthly time frame out, right? Because a lot of volume can come in on a weekly and throw a monthly time frame volume price target out of perspective and would just completely dissolve any context that was associated with that volume price target. So I tend to not really go above daily volume price targets when I'm trading altcoins. Um, but that's, you know, you've got to look for clusters of volume price targets. Like, for instance, on AXS, what you're going to see is when I when I actually put these volume price targets on here, you're going to see that the daily volume price target actually fell within a four hour and a one hour volume price target where we drew a box. I like to draw the boxes with four hour and one hour volume price targets right so if i draw a four hour and a one hour volume price target and they come within close proximity of one another but then what i'll do is i'll fill the gap of proximity with a box like a yellow box which you guys see which then gives me an area in which that i want the volume to come interact which i want the price to come into to take positions so we'll do we'll do that right so we'll start off Firstly with the four hour right we'll just draw the four hour volume price targets and the way we do it like I have a 50 moving average on my volume down here so it just tells me which is a green line you can see that splits overlaid on my volume it just tells me that on whatever time frame I'm looking on the last 50 candles it just tells me if we are under or over the average uh, volume that's been traded in the last 50 candles on a time frame so we're on the four hour right now this green line is telling me um, the average volume that's been traded over the last 50 candles on the four hour. So right now, you can see that we have a cluster where we've traded over the 50 moving average. So the, the whatever's happened here, this is all very abnormal in relation to the last to the previous 50 candles going back here, right? So we had a volume price target here. So we'll, we'll draw this one on. It goes back a little bit, but it's kind of going to give us a good example. But what I'm mostly interested in is this volume here, all of this price action. But we'll um, we'll throw this volume price target on here. So remember that we want to use Bollinger Band's uh, plays, right? Because anything that's inside the Bollinger Band is normal market distribution. We want to be trading um, uh, anomaly uh, trades, right? So we're taking short positions. 1.5 and three time deviations. There's already a video that's out there for you guys to go check that out. But yeah, we want to be trading anything that's in the Bollinger Band. 1.5 to three time deviation. Um, so we'll take this volume price target. So what makes an annual an anomaly volume, right? What makes a volume a, a volume candle stand out is something that catches the eye. By looking at the volume here, you can physically see that this candle. This volume candle sticks out, right? It catches the eye, as does this one. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And what we can also see is out of all of those volumes that we've just seen, they're green, right? Like there are a few red candles like here and here that are above the 50 moving average. But we can see that the eye-catching volume is green, right? Which means that it's bullish because it's telling us that overwhelmingly we are controlled by the buyers. So we'll take that into consideration as we're doing these volume price targets because it's important, right? Whether we're seeing more green or more red, which will give us direction. So we'll just take this one, for instance. So all we do, 
okay, if you just measured the entirety of the candle from wick to wick, so you can see that from the bottom of this wick, you can get it, you can get as kind of as accurate as you feel that is necessary. But from wick to wick, we're about 19.41%, okay? So we take the whole candle from wick to wick, 19.41%, and then we measure that, okay, from the close of the candle on a green candle. So it's always from the close. So if we're measuring from a red candle, say this one, we'll measure from the top down, like this, top to bottom, 6.95%. And then we will measure 6.59% from the closed down, right? That's just an example. We're not going to do it with this candle because obviously, as you can see, the volume is not abnormal. But with here, we go wick to wick on this candle right here. That's 19.5%, we'll say, right? So from the close of the candle up, 19.5%. Where are we? So anywhere in and around there, 19.5%. And you just draw a line, right? Double click, bring it up, four hour. Just type in four hour because then we know it's on the four hour time frame, right? And then we can see that we kind of had a top out on this candle, didn't we, right? And we went sideways around this accumulation zone. So it's all right. That, that volume price target worked. It works, right? It's perfect. So then now the next volume price target is this one. So I'm just going to quickly draw these on now that you know how to do it. So 35.5%, 35 35 0.545%, whatever, right? It's cool. So I'm going to draw these on real quick. Four hour. Bam. This one as well. 31.29. 31. So base the top of that candle. Around there. So as you can see, right, these are very relevant because it tells us that we're, um, that we're going to be hitting like reversal areas or potential consolidation areas. And high volume can be indicative of two things, right? It can be indicative of a continuation like here. We went sideways and then we continued. We can use this volume price target you know, that we got here um, to call the top for this. But you see this, this volume price target up here from this, it was a continuation. Or it can be a reversal, which is what we had from this volume here, right up there. So what we do now is we draw arrows. So to get this volume price target here on this four hour, we use this candle, right? So just mark them, mark them up. And then it was this volume that volume price target there so the arrow just gives indication for which uh candle that we used nice right so we called the top here pretty much with the volume that was in this candle so if so taking that into consideration that we had a three standard deviation and we call the top of the move like you could have easily called the top there and shorted that right and i did so now what we do is we take the one hour volume and we do the exact same thing did the exact same thing, right? So go from here. Twenty three point nine three point nine anywhere within that area. Bam. Arrow. There we go. And see how we have now a four hour and a one hour volume price target that is in proximity to one another. So then what I do to make it even more easy to see is I'll just fill this gap with a box like that. And now it gives us an idea for an area where the volume price target is and where we want to be taking our positions. Right? It gives us a box. So it's not so specific to a certain point. It's saying, OK. I'm expecting the price to come up to and around this area. And in and around this area is where I'm expecting to take my positions. So this is perfect. And then if we go on to the daily, the daily volume right here. Before we had this volume, this was the abnormal volume. So taking this candle into consideration. 
which would be right there. Just do that one more time. So taking this one into consideration, which is about 48.88%. 48.50%. 48.87. Pretty much as close as we're going to get. Right there. <clears throat> now, this is interesting because on AXS, we have a daily. Right there. We have a one hour. Right there. And we have a four hour volume price target. All within the same area. And when you get like uh, you know the daily the four hour and the one hour volume price target in close proximity here it's like okay we can see that we we have a top here we can see that we have multiple areas um volume price targets that's given us really good context into this area so that's exactly what i was looking at and this is why i took my short position so i took i put my limit short position on the daily volume price target and i mean calling the top as perfect as you can that's pretty close it's pretty close and then obviously i took profits down here we had like a, a few more volume price targets down here and then when it came down to test those is where i took profit so i mean that's how we use volume price targets to um predict price action to set limit orders to work out support resistance and things like that right so i hope that helps i hope that, that helps that's like a complete breakdown of how we do it how we do that that's as clear as a thing because i can explain it to you guys so if you have any if you have any questions like now's the time to do it because i'm going to record this for a video it's going to be highlighted so if you have any questions throw them in now so i can throw them in to the highlight video have you back tested this method it's just curious um not so much no i haven't back tested it but it's something that i've been using for <laughs> a very long time and it's something that um you know we we've called multiple tops multiple bottoms like with xrp uh is it is these point see this is, i've even got a volume price target up here like when we had the pump on xrp everyone that was in on the stream i was warning to potentially get out at this point and it's and i mean it's calling calling the top goes this is pretty close so people that got into xrp down here and they were trying to work out where to get out. Like we called volume price targets on XRP up here. And it's like, guys, now it's time to get out. Right? Some people got greedy and stayed in and wanted more. But the majority of you guys got out into the volume price target. And I mean, as calling the top as the move goes, that's as close as I think you're going to get. You know, I definitely get how to draw them. Is it always for shorting though? No, no, no. So you know when I was, uh, if we pull AXS, AXS back up, AXS, right? If we pull this back up, you can see that on the four hour, it's, it's especially prominent on the four hour, right? Uh, we go back, there we go. You can see on the volume here that the volume that sticks out is green. So green, 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 green. So predominantly, the buyers are in control. So you want to draw your volume price targets to the upside because that's where the movement is. But if you go on BTC, it's the exact opposite. Like, look at the volume here. Big red candles, one green. Do you see that? Like, the, the eye-catching volume is to the red side. So you're going to naturally be drawn to drawing your volume price targets to the downside. So the volume is going to lead you anyway. The volume is going to lead you in which way to draw these volume price targets. Um, but it's definitely not just for shorting. It's, it can go for either way, for either way, you know. Like you've got you've got these increasing volume price targets. You can draw a volume price target from this candle to work out how far the next leg down is. If you want to take a short on this. If, like if you are looking to take a short in a 15 minute time frame, potentially on a dead cat bounce, which, you know, we've gone candle over candle now. I did say that was going to happen. So over the next sort of four hours or so, or even, you know, even past that, you're going to be looking at like a half an hour entry on this. You can use this four hour volume price target or even a one hour to work out the next 